We wanted to do a feedback control class that was much more lab based, much more flipped classroom style where there's there are a couple hours of lectures, but the main learning was the three hour lab experience where you'd interact with the TAs and try to engage students in the discussion of their design. The first couple times we taught it, it was very successful and got very popular. Then this past term was the largest class we'd had. It was 130 students. Hey, Professor White. Hi, Professor White. Professor White, thank you so much. When the semester became remote with all the COVID stuff. I really appreciate your enthusiasm and eagerness to improvise. We gathered together enough parts to send a kit of parts home with every single student. We gave them videos to teach them how to assemble it into a system they could control. And then they would have to model the system and then design a control for it. But what we found is that if you think there's one technique that works, there isn't. <laughs> so some students just wanted the expectations of synchronous lectures done live. We're going to figure out when A third of the students just wanted us to set up Zoom breakout rooms where four or five of them would come together and they just talk through the problem sets of the labs. The other thing that worked really well is we had a mixture of grad students and undergrads taking the class. And we decided that a good way to give graduate students the extra task they had to do to make it a grad class was to say, okay, you can satisfy that criteria by helping one of the undergrads get through in the labs. Magically overnight, students who were just lost seemed to suddenly feel like they had a lifeline and grad students suddenly feel connected and, you know what, I can get course credit for doing something that, you know, really means a lot to me. You were incredibly accommodating and understanding. I genuinely enjoyed doing all of the labs at my own time. I really think you did a great job of helping like optimize that experience for us. The idea of doing hardware for a wider audience is really tough. I think the thing that made this class work is the fact that we were willing to put in, you know, think about it, 130 students, six half-hour interviews one-on-one -on -one with each student that's 400 hours right off the bat and then you double or triple that well, props to you your wonderful tas and your colleagues thank you so much for going above and beyond i can't thank you enough you know, we want students to feel a sense of agency but okay i took this class and now if somebody gives me i don't know self-driving car i'm going to know how to control it or they give me you know, a rocket to keep going the right direction. I'm going to know how to do it, but I know how to get started. I know I have the tools that will help me figure out what questions to ask. In, in hindsight, I maybe haven't been as honest with myself about how effective those open-ended labs on campus were, that maybe the things we did to make it work remotely would also have helped students get a better experience out of working on the labs on campus. We're going to do more remote education, not just because of COVID. It doesn't really matter if we can bring them into the lecture halls. So I don't think that's very important to them. I think the thing that will matter the most is for them to be able to interact with each other face to face. If they can just walk down the hall and, and ask one of their friends for help on a problem set, I think that's a big part of the MIT education. Thing.